Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you all for being here today to hear our Now What? Uh, Navigating a New Normal uh, for Business. I feel like I do my air quotes a lot lately because um, lots of question marks, lots of new things to um, try and figure out for business folks. And so here we are with the help of three of our favorite people. Um, and just to start off as an introduction, I, I have a couple bios that I'm just going to read so we all get a bit of background um, of who our presenters are today. So with us, we have Jill Button, who is the president and CEO of Procure Consulting. Jill is a seasoned business and procurement executive with 30 plus years of global business and leadership experience with medium and large growth orientated uh, enterprises. She has hands-on uh, hands knowledge of all aspects of procurement leadership, change management, strategic sourcing, project management, supply chain, and operations management. This experience is complemented by uh, deep subject matter expertise in IT, professional and consulting services, outsourcing, and offshoring. So Jill is with us today. Jill, I want to give a little wave. We also have joining us today, Corette Miller, who's the president and CEO of New Initiatives HR. You will, would have uh, probably seen her on a couple of our webinars earlier in, uh, in I guess, COVID time um, as a special guest to help with our HR um, webinars. Corette has over 20 years experience as a human resources professional, committed and goal-driven performer with the ability to champion product, uh, projects. Corette is versatile and adjusts to any workplace environment. Her passion is to educate and partner with employers and business owners on basic to advanced needs. Clients uh, range from your local pet boutique, hospitality, industry, technology, fitness centers, healthcare, to various corporate environments throughout North America, fitting human resource management to different cultures, language, and le legislation. Hi, Corette, and thanks for joining us. And then also with us today, uh, Brian Davidson, who is the President and Chief Marketing Officer of Light Switch Media. Brian has been in the marketing game for over 20 years. A diverse background of both traditional and digital marketing projects has allowed him to build an integrated marketing model to his clients that help drive new sales and build loyal customers. With clients ranging from Canada's major banks to mom and pop local restaurants, his, ex his experiences have helped his clients grow and break their sales targets. With that, I'm going to hand it over to the group for their presentation. I'll let you all speak about uh, ThriveX and, and what, you're, what you've um, brought together here. Um, and I will say we'll have some questions. If anyone has questions throughout the presentation, to feel free to put them in the chat box at the below. And either we'll take them as we go through or we can save them all to the end. It's really what uh, you, you folks would like to do. Um, and with that, I'm not sure who's starting. I will hand it over to our presenters. Over to Jill. Thank you. Thanks, Nicole. Appreciate that introduction. Uh, we're very happy to be here this morning. Uh, myself, my partners, uh, Corette and Brian, are going to take you through some interesting material that we hope will be uh, helpful and informative. And we are available if there's any questions. Um, just a little bit about ThriveX. So we are your executive team. Uh, we brought together three experienced executives in our respective fields that complement each other and are very specifically focused on small and medium-sized businesses. We have services that range from marketing, IT, procurement, project management, HR, recruiting, consulting, uh, together is the ThriveX partnership and we're actually adding uh, new services um, very shortly. Uh, again, our, our real focus is to help businesses from startup through to enterprise and to help support the growth from every stage in between. Um, with all of those complimentary services that I described. If there's anyone who'd like more information, you can actually visit us at thrivex.com, at thrive with a Y, vx.com, or email us at info at thrivex.com. So today's objectives for the webinar, we really wanted to help um, provide guidance to the uh, attendees around Team Canada and the call to action that 
both the federal and provincial governments are looking to uh, have people provide goods and services that are of greatest need today. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about retooling business and how organizations have stepped up for Team Canada and literally have retooled their businesses going from breweries to hand sanitizers is just an example. Uh, we're going to talk about becoming a government supplier and how those who may not have thought about it could potentially participate and again join Team Canada and to that call to action. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about re renegotiating and optimizing your contracts and what you should be looking at now. Now is the time to negotiate contracts and I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to turn it over to Brian after that and he's going to talk about marketing your business through an economic downturn and providing some guidance and oversight around some free marketing tools uh, or low cost tools that are available to small and medium sized businesses today. And then Corette's going to wrap it up with really some of the changing um, uh, areas within HR that we need to be aware of from culture, uh, new rules as we um, open up the economy, um, impacts on health and wellness. So we're going to jump right into supply chain and procurement. Um, so answering the call to action, Team Canada. So it's all hands on deck. Uh, the governments are looking for people to assist in the fight against COVID. Um, to date, over 26,000 submissions have been received by the government of Canada to expedite and have been expediting the contracting and the procure life, to procure life-saving PPE. Um, as you all probably are aware, there is a tremendous shortage of available in-country personal protective equipment. and we need to all step up to assist in providing the life-saving equipment, not just for hospitals, but now as we start to open up our economy, there is a, there's going to be even a more um, tremendous need for businesses to be able to keep their workers safe. In Ontario, there, it was announced that there's a $50 million fund called the Ontario Together Fund. And it's specifically to help businesses that are retooling to produce equipment and supplies to fight COVID-19. So what is urgently needed? Some of the things that are needed on the good side include N95 masks. We've heard a lot about the shortage of N95, and we've also seen some of the challenges in procuring N95 masks, specifically from 3M. Um, the, uh, the world is looking for N95. They're the highest rated in terms of protection and the supply is absolutely scarce and we need to be able to cultivate local sources within Canada and Ontario so that we are not subject to global constraints and shortage in supply, um, what we call supply risk. Um, additionally, things like surgical masks are needed. Um, gloves, vinyl gloves, gowns, coveralls, eye protection, hand sanitizer. It's still incredibly difficult to find, but again, we found, we found some incredible uh, people stepping up as part of Team Canada to, to retool their businesses, many in Durham region, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, eye protection, ventilators. Um, thankfully, we did not see the dramatic crush on our healthcare systems, and we've been fairly successful in flattening the curve. So it's not to say that it won't be needed, because as we open up the economy, there will absolutely be new cases, and we need to ensure that those life-saving equipment is available to help save lives. Thermometers is another one. To try to find a thermometer can be quite challenging, and it's one of the ways that we find out through fevers, whether or not the symptoms are there. Some of the services um, that are needed, things like guards, security guards is also, is also needed and a vital service to assist. Nursing services is pretty obvious. Food services, a lot of people are unable to um, feed themselves. They are uh, experiencing unemployment at record rates and the ability for them to actually um, provide food, the basics for themselves is quite challenging. Laundry service, as you can imagine, is also an area of great concern to be able to ensure that things are clean and sanitized. 
accommodation, maintenance services, um, personal services, uh, services for those who are in high risk populations, specifically around um, uh, those who are uh, in long-term long care, the ability to actually provide resources to uh, support those critical and high-risk areas is, is uh, just challenging for sure. Um, and then IT support services. One of the things that a lot of people may not realize is that in unprecedented uh, record numbers, people are now being digitally enabled, working from home. Um, all of us, my two partners, Brian and Karad, have all been working from home and launched Thrivex actually in February before, in the middle of, of the pandemic, but just before um, everything was shut down, you know, people are still having to keep their businesses going. And uh, as we know, Zoom and webinars are actually quite popular. So retooling your business, what does that mean? So over 5,000 small Canadian businesses have already offered to retool their businesses from their floor for critical PPE equipment. Um, some examples of Canadian businesses that are retooling um, include, there's a company called Novo Textile in Coquitlam. Um, they are uh, one of the very first manufacturers of N95 respirators in Canada. Uh, Brian Custom Sports near Leamington, Ontario. They would normally make hockey equipment, uh, hockey pads. Uh, now they're actually sewing stretcher sheets. Um, and into disposable gowns for healthcare workers. Some other examples in Grand Bank, Newfoundland, Dynamic Air Shelters has been manufacturing for over two decades. They normally would build industrial shelters for oil and gas, but they actually reverted to building emergency hospital and quarantine shelters. Um, uh, All or nothing brewery in Oshawa, some of you may have uh, sampled their, their amazing brew. They've actually stepped up and are creating hand sanitizer. You can buy it today on their website. And likewise, Brock Street Brewery, some of uh, you may have known that company as well, Great Beer. Um, they just received final government approval through the CRA to license um, their, to uh, licensing to sell their hand, hand sanitizer as well. So some great companies in Ontario, Durham, and right across Canada. This is an example of the gentleman out of uh, Oshawa from All or Nothing Brewery, um, actually rolling off one of the first kids of hand sanitizer. So how do you become a government supplier? Some of you uh, listening may already be familiar with the process, but for those of you who are not, who may actually have the ability to retool your business, there's a couple of ways that you can actually get engaged. I've included some websites for you to go into with more information. It's always important for you to rely on the most recent source of information because as we know, things are changing so rapidly and the information that you received an hour ago may actually be outdated. So always check the website. So the federal government can be contacted through buyandsell.gc.ca. There is actually a specific session, section called Calling All Suppliers Help Canada Com Co Combat COVID-19 a bit of a mouthful, but if you actually Google it, or if you want to click the link, which we'll make available to you, it talks to you about how you become an actual supplier to the federal government. It will reiterate the supplies that are absolutely needed today. And generally, beyond COVID, the website that I described is also an area that you can find out more, even for the existing goods and services that you provide, um, how to actually search for tenders that are available that maybe your business hasn't um, taken advantage of before. There's great information there. All of the tenders are posted there along with the criteria, the award date, uh, and, and the criteria for submission, for submitting your bid. Uh, I've also included a submission form. So uh, you'll see the link here as well, um, forward slash form. And then from a provincial government perspective, because there's also an opportunity with the provincial government um, to be able to help uh, with the fight. And you can see the website there, it's covid19.ontario.ca, how your organization can help fight.
COVID uh, coronavirus virus, uh, and supply and product. I encourage everyone to take a look at the website, explore it. If you have the ability to retool and to be able to address some of the shortage that we see today, but also that we will continue to see. I want to stress that the, despite having flattened the curve, our hospitals are not the only one. Now that we're actually opening up the economy, everyone needs to consider that those who are returning to work in office environments and manufacturing environments, while previously discouraged from using PPE, will actually need PPE in order to keep their employees safe. I'm going to talk a little bit about the supply chain. What I find really exciting, um, although under uh, not under the best of circumstances, is that people are better understanding the criticality of supply chain and what supply chain and procurement mean. It's uh, quite shocking to hear our prime minister and our uh, premier talk about supply chain, the criticality of the supply chain, and in particular, the importance of procurement. And a lot of people are asking about uh, careers in supply chain. I have a great relationship with uh, Durham College, who has a wonderful supply chain program. And I would encourage anybody who is looking for an exciting career in procure procurement and supply chain to check it out. Um, so what do we need to do in order to build a resilient and transparent supply chain? So suppliers are having issues delivering, and it's going to continue for the foreseeable future, especially around PPE equipment. They need to have visibility into the supply chain in order for them to be able to assess risk. So one of the examples would be in this case, um, with the N95 respirators, there are, so, there are only so many number of providers of N95 masks around the globe. And you can imagine as the pandemic started to sweep around the globe, the demand for N95 respirators was increasing dramatically. And because there is such a demand, it becomes a scarce um, commodity and therefore the necessity to actually encourage local production of these critical uh, life-saving supplies is absolutely um, going to be paramount. We've heard the Premier talk about, you know, I'm not going to rely on uh, global leaders anymore. We need to start um, increasing our availability. So I encourage everybody to think local. It is a major risk um, during a pandemic for those things that are critical. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a minute as well. You have to balance your contractual obligations against the best interests of everyone. So a good example of that is 3M. While they may, had, uh, they may have had um, contractual obligations around supply, they had to look at what is the best interest of the world and the ability to actually provide equipment to uh, people around the world in order where the demand was the highest. It is the same for any business, the local businesses, um, you need to look at your contracts and you need to ensure that your contracts are updated for the time. When those contracts were negotiated, they may have actually been in a very different time. Um, the world has changed in three months dramatically. Uh, it'll also be really important for you to increase your communication with those suppliers. Those relationships are going to be critical for your business to, to be able to uh, get back on its feet. Um, some items uh, you may find constricted because of the way in which they're procured. A lot of these goods um, are procured outside of Canada. Um, in the U.S., China is, a, is another great example. You are seeing um, tremendous lead times for goods that normally would be delivered within a few days. It's now taking uh, several months um, to actually procure. This is just a little example of, you know, negotiations is something that not everyone is comfortable with, um, but you should never uh, negotiate out of fear, but you should never fear to negotiate. So what are some of the things you should be thinking about from a contractual perspective? So think about, again, um, reviewing your contracts, 
and identifying those potential weaknesses that exist within your contract and make sure again that it is current for the economic disruptions that are happening today. Um, look at improving um, some of your terms. Uh, some of those things may include exclusivity. So again, if you have uh, access to goods and services that normally are, there's no disruption, you need to figure out whether or not those things that are critical for your business to operate have the potential to be disrupted and ensure that you have um, the ability to go elsewhere because some contracts from suppliers will actually say that they will be the primary supplier, that you have an obligation to purchase a certain quantity or volume from them. You need to look at your contract for these exclusivity clauses to make sure that you're not locked into a contract that doesn't make sense for you. A limitation of liability. This is where if there's a default of a contract, it's the amount of money that you would have to pay or either party would have to pay in the case of a default, uh, whether it's uh, negligence, misrepresentation, they may be infringing on somebody else's product, it's the damages that they would have to pay you, or if you breach the contract, the damage that you would have to pay to your supplier. Um, generally, we see these contracts, depending on the type of goods or services that are being bought, um, sometimes they're unlimited because the damages are so high and egregious they can't be um, uh, contemplated. Um, but generally what we see is what's, what's called one times the contract or several times the contract value. Uh, I know some of these terms and conditions may be challenging. Uh, if you have a, a lawyer who can assist you or ProcurePro actually does contract negotiations, we can help you with some of these uh, more challenging clauses. Some other uh, clauses that you might want to particularly pay attention to are things like termination. So this is really where either a contract ends naturally or it's a point where you can actually end the contract for convenience. Uh, suppliers generally want to lock you in for a period of time, whether it's two, three, four, five years. Um, in terms of what's happening in the world today, your ability to actually terminate for convenience is something that everyone should consider um, updating their contracts for because we do not know uh, while um, the pandemic has already started and we're, we're likely in the middle of it if there is a second wave or a future pandemic with a different virus we need to be able to get out of contract um, and it has to be a uh, fit for purpose so it has to be uh, taken in consideration with what it is that you're buying um, and then the last clause is around force majeure. Some people may not have heard of this clause. Essentially, it's an act of God. What happens is if something prevents either party from fulfilling their obligations, such as an act of God, like a pandemic, war, uh, massive crime, riot, then it is a clause that um, judges will consider when enforcing a contract. You need to be careful when you're uh, enforcing force majeure or if you're calling force majeure um, because it can have lasting long-term damaging effects to your company as well as to your supplier. So again, I would highly recommend you consult uh, your lawyer or again, ProcurePro can certainly help. So some additional considerations. So right now, reputation and brand uh, remain a great concern during and following the pandemic. Again, buy local wherever possible versus import. Um, there's a high sensitivity today around um, importing, especially from foreign locations, the US and China. Um, you need to be uh, cognizant of that and potentially any impacts to the disruption of your business or even reputational impacts. Um, uh, again, Consider long-term impacts of force majeure. It can damage your company's reputation. Suppliers will not want to work with you if you use this uh, lightly. And it is um, something that should be seriously taken before uh, use. Um, and then finally, consider reactions to corporate actions that have taken. Um, there's some examples today um, where Pusateri is actually selling Lysol uh, wipes. Um, I believe I've got a picture here for an exorbitant price and the backlash around 
this price gouging can have lasting impacts on the reputation of these businesses. Here's just an example of uh, Pusateri selling uh, wipes at $29.99 uh, and with one per family. Just absolutely ridiculous prices. They said it was a, a mistake, an error. Not sure how that happened. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Brian now. Brian's going to walk you through how to market your business in an economic downturn. So Brian, take it away. Thanks, Chris, or Jill, sorry. Um, yeah, it's, it's, thanks for showing that last slide and then handing it over to the marketing guy. Um, the, the, just the, the challenges around marketing your business in, in, uh, in, a, in a climate like this um, is really, it's really challenging because you have to somehow stay top of mind um, during this time so that your clients and potential clients know that you're still around. Uh, and, and it's hard to break through the noise because all the focus is around um, around COVID-19 and the news surrounding that. And then you get, you know, these lovely examples of companies not being very empathetic to, to the situation and price gouging. Um, but like I said, you still have to let them know that you're out there. You have to uh, make sure that they understand that you are still operating uh, at, or or at least are still there and are getting ready to open for business. Yeah. Um, so no, go back, go back, Jill. Um, so adver you know, advertising and marketing helps you stay top of mind. And it, it also sh sh showcases stability in your business to your potential clients. And that's, it's a, it's a key thing going forward in that they want to be able to know that they are safe to purchase from you. So continuing to, get your message out and be uh, present in the market is really going to be helpful um, in the recovery uh, when things go, go through. So again, unlike Pusateri's, you, you have to be aware of what's going on in the collective world right now and feel, and the feeling in general that the public has and to be empathetic to what people are dealing with and, and, you know, showcasing some, um, some stability and some integrity in what it is that your business is going to be doing. And, and so there's this saying that's when times are good, you should advertise. And when times are tough, like they are today, you must advertise. And uh, because if you don't spend on marketing, you run the risk of your clients forgetting about your business. Uh, and when people start spending money again, as the, as the economy is, is as it is now starting to reopen, they're going to remember the businesses who remained active in the marketplace. So you want to move to the next slide, Joe? So here's a good example of why you need to keep spending. And it's, it, you know, there's multiple, um, there's many, many, many cases that we can, we could talk about, but um, a great one is from the great depression, which is, you know, in terms of the economic um, impacts are, are similar to what we're dealing with right now. And, you know, so post was the market leader in dry cereal at the time. Uh, they basically, they almost eliminated all their advertising spend during the depression and Kellogg's took advantage of that by doubling their advertising budget during the same period of time. And as the great depression ended, Kellogg's profits increased 30%. They became the market leader in the dry cereal category and uh, post declined uh, rather rapidly. They're, I mean, obviously they're still in existence, but uh, their market leader status was, was, was impacted. Um, and so, you know, you really need to, to be aware of that because there's, there's multiple cases throughout history where times like this, if you, if you cut back and stop being top of mind, that has a major impact on your, your business recovery and your positioning in the marketplace. So if you want to go to the next slide. So Sam Walton was this, I just, this is a great quote. Um, he, when asked about his thoughts on repression on a recession, he replied, I just thought about it and decided not to participate. And so what you find with, um, you know, think what you will of, of the business practices of Walmart, but what they've done is they've created a mindset that says, okay, this is what it is, but we're going to keep operating, keep being present, keep, moving forward. And, and granted, that's easy to say when you're uh, a company the size of Walmart, but there are things you can do as a small and mid-sized business to make sure um, 
that you do as well stay top of mind and stay functioning and viable. You want to hit the next slide? So now what? So the business is, uh, the economy starting to open up. Um, most businesses, if not all businesses are struggling right now. So what is it, how, how, how do you market your business when you have no revenues coming in or very, or, you know, severely restricted their revenues coming in. So we just have some, some, great tools that that we use but also we implement for for our clients to help them get their business uh, messaging out there uh, that are low cost uh, highly effective or in some cases completely free um, so we're just going to talk about some of these tools um, so one of the one of the most important things you can have in your business is a, is a properly functioning uh, CRM uh, it allows you to stay on top of um, your clients, your prospects. Um, it helps you manage those leads, uh, stay organized and um, make sure you're following up on the specific tasks or, or processes that you need to. Uh, so the, the tool that we actually use with, with Thrivex and also with Lightswitch Media is, is Zoho. Um, there is a free version of this available. Uh, it has some marketing automations uh, included uh, within the CRM tool. Uh, it also has a free mobile app, so you can actually manage your CRM uh, right from your phone. And uh, that's the link right there. Um, Zoho also has this, uh, it has a suite. Thanks, Joe. Uh, Zoho also has a suite called Zoho One. Uh, and one of the main components in there is Zoho Meeting. So this is an alternative to Zoom, which we're all sitting on today. Uh, Zoom obviously being the market leader right now. Uh, Zoho Meeting has all the same features. It also allows you to deal with webinars and recording, screen sharing, all that kind of stuff. It's, um, it is very secure. Again, there's a mobile app included and there is actually a free version available to that. Uh, but if you choose to go with a paid option, it is a very low cost tool. Um, with a lot of functionality built into that. So from a pure marketing standpoint, in terms of just getting your messaging out there, obviously a lot of people are out on social media. They are, their businesses are trying to stay present and it can be challenging if you're not um, graphically inclined to make sure that you've got good content, good posts going out. And so a really fantastic tool that's out there that is absolutely free to use is Canva. Uh, what makes it so great is it's it's a it's it's a tool that allows you to do graphic design for people who aren't graphic designers and it, like I said it's completely free but the probably the strongest features of it is that they have preset templates for the proper social media post sizes so uh, as as you probably know Instagram post images are different in size than Facebook which are different than LinkedIn which are different than Twitter and they have templates in there that you can create images um, specifically for the platform you want to post on and that the images are the correct sizes for that. And it's a really simple drag and drop tool. Uh, you can place images and then lay text over top of it. You can combine images together, creating collages. Um, so it's a really great tool and it is completely free to use. There's a paid version, but um, the, the tools that are available in the free are quite extensive. Um, MailChimp. I think everyone has heard of MailChimp or has used MailChimp, but uh, I can tell you this. I have a client that last week had to send out a message to their client base. They have 362 um, members in their email list, uh, and they actually sent out 362 individual email addresses, unbeknownst to me, because they don't use any type of email software. It took them four hours to send those out. So it, obviously MailChimp is very simple, it's easy to use, it's a free option available to it. Uh, so you can create newsletters, bulk email distribution. Uh, they have lots of templates there so that they, if, again, if you're not graphically inclined, it makes it really easy to create a nice looking newsletter or just an email um, going out. And there's lots of help articles and other um, resources that are available to you. Next one. Uh, and then in terms of social media, because again, you can maintain a presence without spending a lot of money. Um, Buffer is a great tool that allows you to manage your social media posts for all your social media channels. Uh, Cause I know that's a, that's a challenging thing. Uh, that's what we hear all the time from our clients. Uh, it has a great help menu. There's lots of templates. There is a scheduling tool, which really makes it easier 
um, to stay on top of social media and getting your messaging out. And it is completely free to use. Um, so it's, it's a tool that, that we would recommend. There's also within the Zoho suite, something called Zoho social, which is very similar to that. It is a paid version, but it's an, an extremely low cost version, uh, which allows you to do a lot of additional things beyond buffer. Uh, but it's, it's a route. I think these are great tools to make sure that you're not spending two, three hours every single day. You can actually schedule out your social media posts by taking, you know, one, one day a week and spending a couple hours there and getting everything all done. And for those of you, we're starting to hear a lot uh, about podcasts and I'm sure everyone uh, has listened to a podcast here or there. Uh, we listen to them a lot um, in our business um, and with Jill and Cred as well. Um, so if you're interested in getting into a podcast, um, because it seems to be, you know, a growing trend there, you know, actually Jill asked me a question last week, how do, what kind of technology do you need? What kind of equipment do you need to start a podcast? Quite frankly, you need a cell phone. Um, Anchor is a podcast recording tool. It is a completely free. It's an app on Android and uh, Apple. You download that. You basically create um, your podcast that gets distributed on all the major uh, podcast platforms, iTunes, Spotify, Google Music, um, and you use your cell phone like a conference call and bring in people and you can then record your podcast with them just using your phone. Uh, and then there's editing tools available so you can, you know, do intro music and cut things in and out of it. And it's really simple to use, uh, completely free. And it allows you to get started on that. And it's actually highly recommended if anyone follows, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk or Gary V, uh, who is a, a marketing social media marketing guru out of New York City. Um, he, this, is, this is something that he highly recommends if you're looking at getting into um, the podcast world. I think that's it for me. So I'm gonna hand it over to Kret now to talk about how, uh, the, what the changing landscape of HR is in today's economic climate. Oh, good, thank you very much, Brian. Um, so we're going to talk about a little things to kind of keep in mind. So uh, obviously our workplaces have changed um, and in the next in the few next few weeks to come. Uh, they're going to change a little bit more. <clears throat> but I wanted to talk about keeping in mind our new workplace as of right now. Some of us um, are remote or some of us are on site. Um, but essentially that's what our workplace is and some organizations it's split um, and sometimes it's 100% um, either way. Either ones, I want to keep in mind and, and help employers remind around uh, re having a respectful workplace. And which thought, what I mean by that is understanding harassment and discrimination and workplace violence um, during these times. So unfortunately, I have had um, a couple of claims come through of while individuals are online on a Zoom call like it is now of inappropriate comments and suggestions being made. So I'll give you a quick example. I got a call from a, a female employee um, uh, from, a can from a client and you know, her boss said as a joke, um, you know, why don't you remove your top? It'll make it look like that you're not, you don't have any clothes on. Um, so those are some of kind of the examples that we need to keep in mind of why we are working remotely and we're working in our new workplace on Zoom or whatever technology that you're using. And of course, my recommendation around that is re, you should hopefully have uh, policies in place um, already. And if you don't, um, you know, get them, but review them and implement and ensure that you're highlighting some of the conduct that is expected um, because on remote, on site, or on Zoom, um, it's all the same. It is still uh, your workplace. Next slide, great. So what are some of the HR influences? Um, so currently right now, it, you know, we have our Employment Standards Act. As of right now, not many changes have happened in the ESA. So a lot of uh, individuals are thinking that due to the COVID and pandemic that our ESA legislation has changed. Um, and it, it, as of this point in time, it's not. Um, <clears throat> So let's talk about layoffs because a lot of people are very concerned about the layoffs and having to go through um, using the SERB benefit. I mean, there's you know 8 million people in Canada right now on that benefit. 
Um, so what can you do to avoid constructive dismissal? Because uh, if you technically under the act, the act states that you should have had this uh, termination or uh, a clause under your employment ending uh, category for, for a layoff. So in your either employee handbook or your employment agreement, under employment ending clause, you would have four different kind of categories. One, I can end within 90 days probation. Two, for just cause, which is usually around uh, fraud or theft or something severe. Um, and then for one is a determination you're not a fit, so we're going to give you one week per year to service, whatever that clause is that you negotiate. And the fourth one would be around layoffs, is that uh, we have a right to lay off, um, you know, do for shortage of work or things like that. Of course, 90% uh, of employers today don't have that in, in their um, agreements. So what can you do right now to avoid a constructive dismiss? This is unprecedented. This is a different time. You know, our country has never experienced this in, in a while um, or anything like it in our time. Uh, so to avoid constructive dismissal, uh, communicate frequently with your staff, provide a written letter if you did lay off um, or have to, you know, may have to in the future, provide a written letter. Um, provide company benefits, keep any company benefits going. They're the biggest, uh, one of the errors that employers can make is by uh, dismissing those benefits or seizing them. So keep them going and really ensure that you highlight that this is temporary and that you have full intent to return to the employee to work as soon as they possibly can. Of course, the essential employer doesn't have a choice. Um, so they are struggling with some of the workers re one, refusing to work. Um, but essentially, if you're a essential worker uh, with an, because your employer is their part, you layoffs or you know, staying at home is not an option. Other departures, this is not the time to depart your staff. This is not the time and this is a high trend I've been on many uh, conferences with lawyers and they're getting many questions around, well, I got some dead wood, I've got staff that, you know, haven't been performing for this and uh, is this an opportunity for me to get rid of them? Um, the answer to that is no. Make sure that you are following the ESA and uh, common law requirements if you're going to make a decision to terminate. And of course, the garbage truck is going by, which is activating my dog to bark right now. <laughs> Just perfect timing. Um, okay, some other HR influences, the Human Rights Code. Um, avoid possible violation of the employee's privacy. So, uh, you know, again, I can say over communicate as much as you possibly can. Have a very detailed communication plan to your staff if you're going to be putting in such a procedure like temperature testing when they're first arriving to work. Let them know in advance that this is what's going to happen and let them know in advance of how what the process is. Because um, <clears throat> the, the one issue around the temperature testing is that although it's useful, it, can may, also, it may end up um, disclosing other health issues. And if you have those, uh, how, if you've been informed of that, how are you now going to manage it? So because an employer can require an employee to advise their diagnosis of COVID-19, but under the human rights normally outside of this time frame, uh, di uh, providing the employer with your diagnosis is not a requirement and it's actually a breach of the human rights code. So when, they're pot when you are notified of a positive case, be very careful around disclosure um, ensuring that you're not disclosing it to the rest of your organization and other employees but possibly you're gonna to have to provide it to public health because they like to do the tracing back. So again, reiterating, have a communication plan in place in your processes to, to make sure that you understand um, and really take the necessary steps to reduce the spread. So uh, that should be done before you even open up your organization. Make sure you have your personal equipment, like uh, you know, it's been mentioned here today, making sure that you have all the processes in place. How are you going to configure your workplace to ensure social distancing? Do you really need to configure your workspace? Do you need to go from an open space down to now a space that's got cubicles? 
Um, and then the, all the processes in place when it comes to um, hand washing and, and having the sanitizer and the support that the employee needs to do. But really when it comes to it, also ensure, I, uh, you know, we have kind of, some of us are forgetting this, is ensure that the employee has the cognitive support that they need. So mental health right now is really, is, uh, you know, working remotely, being away from our teams, um, it's a, a, a lot of stress on a lot of people. Uh, so if you have an employee assistance program, um, which the uh, EAP, which is under your most group of benefits, um, reminding them of that number is great because it's a support, it's free financial support, it's uh, mental support. There's, there's a lot of ways that you can uh, provide that through your EAP program or other means. Um, so just wanna make sure I'm getting my thing there. <coughs> Uh, also, yep, no, go ahead, that's great, Jill. Under the Occupational Health and Safety Act, so of course the um, employers have the duty to ensure the employee's safety. So again, what that's reiterating that employers have to have all PPP e and physical distancing um, worked out before you open. So the premier and stuff was very clear a week or so ago that if you do not have what you need to open, then don't open, okay? Um, and I, I reiterate that because they've also made it very clear that they've hired 500 inspectors and they've already to date done 7,000 workplace inspections and they've issued 3,000 fines. So that's quite scary. Um, a lot of clients are calling and saying, wow, what do I need? So, um, and, you know, and every workplace is different and it's not going to be the same for your organization it'd be different for another organization. Um, but there's a lot of tools out there. Our Ontario government site has um, extreme amount of checklists and, and tools to help you kind of walk through and get you started. But what are you gonna do if you have a work refusal? Uh, refusal due to the, I, I might. Um, I'm, you know, as harsh as this may seem, this is not a valid work refusal in Ontario. Um, employees cannot call in and say, I'm refusing to come to work because I might, or I'm refusing to come to work because, you know, my spouse has, a, a, you know, a, a, an illness that may be affected in a spot. So, I'm, you know, Manitoba is the only country, uh, only province actually that has the work refusal for outside of the workplace. Employees have to be on site um, to do a work refusal. And of course, then there's a process of you know the employer has to demonstrate that they've done everything reasonable and i'm like reinforcing go every precaution you possibly can think like go above and beyond so this the minimal and saying hey we tried is not going to work right now you want to go above and beyond um, but the employee has to be on site and if they're not still comfortable then you know the steps are is to have the ministry of labor come in and then that's a process. And of course, they're doing it usually by remote right now. Very few are coming in. Oh, can you go back one more, Jill? Sorry. Um, again, reprisal during to customer facing. The employer has, again, wants to improve that they've taken all reasonables. And just a reminder, the Ministry of Labor, when they are called in, it is their final decision. So if the employee still refuses uh, for work, you now have a performance issue and a different conversation. So, so we talked about employee wellness while working remotely. Um, keeping your employees healthy with a wellness program is so important. It will have definitely a high impact on their productivity and their state of mind. Um, you know, it can be argued that remote workers are more likely to suffer from burnout unless you're, you know, they talk about being an introvert and an extrovert and the introverts are really liking this right now and extroverts like myself are like, ah, we're going crazy. Uh, so, but uh, they will burn, they, you know, working from home and remotely because it's always right there especially if you don't have an office. Like I have a designated room, it's a full office. I close my door when I'm done work. So it's, you know, it's just not in front of me on my kitchen counter or dining room. Uh, so it's easier for me to shut down. 
uh, individuals who are not used to this and have been forced to, you know, adjust to working at home right now, it's always right there. So therefore, burnout can end up being good. Empowering your employees, again, over communicating. You cannot over communicate. Empowering them to feel good, to do good work will prevent uh, burnout. Uh, empowering them to go out and, and, and do things wellness or what need what they need to do to reduce their stress and to feel good supporting them on that reminding them on that um, is great so you know example if you were in your office today you may have a lunch and learn around you know employee wellness and you know we had a naturopath on one of our sessions a few weeks back and she talked about different things doing remotely operate the same as if you were in your office in regular um, regular operations. Uh, there's so many other things that you can do right now to help prevent them and feel good. The benefits of employee wellness will increase productivity. It improves healthy behaviors. Of course, it reduces the risks of any diseases. So our anxiety right now, you know, stress, reduce stress. Our anxiety, our stress, you know, they have say anxiety is the silent killer. So, you know, keeping them in the loop. I've, I've, I've heard of employers, um, you know, employees have told me that not once have they heard from one of their leaders or have they heard from the business owner. That's anxiety on its own because they've forgotten about me. I'm not going to be pulled back, you know, type of thing. So in, 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 uh, encouraging wellness while remotely will really help improve your employee retention because they're going to say, wow, they actually do really care about me. And this is actually, you know, it's good. It keeps the morale up. Um, however, which ways you do it, there's a, a lot of I ideas out there, um, but it will really do that. <clears throat> but the also as well is, um, as Brian says that during this time, if you're advertising your marketing and you're still out there and people are seeing it, you're having a great reputation within your community. So if you do end up losing staff over this time and you don't have them, the, the top talent to pull back, you're going to become still more and more attractive when you're trying to recruit and hire that top, top talent and to bring them in. Um, so I, you know, making, being out there promoting, uh, communicating with your staff, your best referrals are your current staff members. So you're going to uh, keep everybody really, you know, engaged with you. And that's all okay. I have. Thank you, uh, Corette and Brian. Nicole, I think we're going to open up the lines if you want to go ahead. We've got about five minutes for questions. Sure. So uh, again, just to uh, direct everyone's attention to the chat box at the bottom of your screen, we do have a couple in here right now. Um, the first one came a while ago, it was just asking if we were uh, going to be sending the presentation around afterward. Yes, traditionally we are recording and we will make the um, recording available. I'll ask you though, Jill or Coretta or Brian, will the slides be available for us to send uh, to the participants via email? Is that okay with everyone? Yes, we can make them available. Perfect. Just because I know Jill specifically for you, there was a lot of links in there. So some very good information. Um, the second question here, as businesses start uh, thinking about reopening, where can they find lists of all the resources for PPE? Um, I can answer that one. Uh, the Invest Durham site, so Durham Region um, has uh, put together a task force, the Durham Economic Task Force, who has been charged with creating uh, the Invest Durham website on that website, and we can circulate that or put it in the uh, chat box, the link. There is a portal where we are collecting information from local uh, Durham sources uh, of folks who are selling or offering PPE, but also we have a link to outside it, uh, into the rest of the GTA. I don't know if either of you um, have another resource you might want to offer, Jill. No, I was gonna actually um, uh, provide the same, Nicole, it's a great site. Uh, and the information actually has been posted through the Ajax Pickering Board of Trade. I've seen that a few times. So that's, uh, I would, best resource I would say for Durham Region. Awesome. So our website's easiest to find apboardoftrade.com on our COVID page. We have all the links uh, there. So I haven't seen any other questions come in. 
Um, we can give it another minute. But in the meantime, I'd like to just say thank you all uh, so much for putting this presentation together. Three extremely important topics uh, for business folks to remember as we're going through this. Um, you know, very important to think outside the box uh, in the procurement process, the government needs um, to lean on our, our business community to support them and in the manufacturing of PPE. So if you can or have the ability to, to pivot and, and think outside the box and how you might be able to support, absolutely now is the time to do so. Marketing, Brian, you're, you're absolutely right. It's, it's in times like these where you need to keep forefront, you need to keep top of mind for your customers. It's extremely difficult to do so, but once we are open, and here's my air quotes again, back to normal, um, businesses, they'll be back. Your customers will be back and you wanna make sure you're, you're top of mind uh, and that you haven't closed, that you've been available this whole time. And correct, certainly HR, you know, one of the leading uh, questions we get all of the time, um, how to manage employees, what are employer obligations, uh, and the, the questions around reopening and safety around that is something that the Board of Trade has certainly um, pushed to the forefront of our advocacy efforts. I think uh, clearer guidelines are needed, um, what is required versus what's a recommendation from the government because they have announced these uh, special folks that are, are um, doing uh, assessments of business. So it's, it's a scary time, but for sure, uh, that's top of mind for us and something that we can all help with, I think, moving forward. It's just, we're gonna have to be patient, that's all. Um, I haven't seen any other questions pop in the box, but you can see on the screen, there is an email there to connect with all three of our wonderful speakers today. Of course, their website there as well. So with that, I will uh, say a big thank you to Corette, to Brian, to Jill. Very much appreciate your presentation and your knowledge that you've shared. Uh, and for now, I will say goodbye. I hope you all have a great day. It's going to be super hot and sunny. Maybe you can step out and, and get some vitamin D. Um, otherwise, I wish you all a successful day, and we will connect soon. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Bye. Bye.